Guys, I got the craziest power station. Highly unique in uh, the fact that it's got these little modules that uh, can pop out and run on their own uh, without being attached to the power station. But it's all just a gimmick. Let's find out together. Before we get into this, I just want to ask those of you that uh, are just here for the very beginning of the video and then leave, please consider liking and subscribing. 100% free for you to do, but they benefit the channel tremendously. If you're one of the people that stay till the end, I thank you very much, and you're welcome to wait until the end to like and subscribe and uh, comment and share. But I wanted to catch uh, those of you that uh, leave at the very beginning and uh, request uh, your help with that. Let's unbox this power station. Here's the power station itself. Very unique design. I've never seen uh, anything quite like this. The handle is very unique. You push this button and then it pops up and then you can grab it. A little uh, port of some kind there. Wireless charging pad on the top. We've got our charging inputs over here. AC output on this side. These are the front uh, units and uh, we'll have to see. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's the cool thing about this. Uh, they've got these modules and uh, you're able to mix and match and swap around and stuff as needed. Very creative. And then we've got uh, in the bottom of the box some documentation and uh, charging brick and charging cord. This is my full size kitchen refrigerator and uh, let's just plug this power station in and uh, see if one it will run it and if it does how long will it run it. We'll go ahead and uh, turn the AC power on. Yeah, it looks like it uh, succeeded. So anyway, it is 11.38 a.m. So we'll let this run and uh, we'll see how long it runs the fridge for. Guys, I am uh, late. It's 6.42 and I had to go somewhere, but uh, my wife uh, stayed here and uh, watched this power station run. Anyway, it died at about uh, 4.30. So this power station was able to run my full-size kitchen refrigerator for just over five hours. All right, uh, this power station is uh, completely depleted down to zero. We've got the stopwatch out. We're gonna see how long this takes to fully recharge using the AC wall adapter. I plug it in. We'll go ahead and uh, start the stopwatch and uh, for me it's gonna be a couple of hours. This uh, is estimating that it's going to take just over six hours. It's putting in 77 watts. We'll see if that uh, is indeed the case. Okay, it is officially finished charging and I wasn't right here when it finished but I was pretty close. So that took just under six hours to fully charge from zero to 100 percent. A little over the claim time, however they do say approximately five hours and uh, so I guess depending on your definition of approximately this uh, time was within range. We've got a wireless charging pad. Let's go ahead and test that. Yep, works. On the front here we've got uh, a standard cigarette style car port and then we've got uh, 12 volt, it appears to be 5521 barrel plugs and then uh, down here we've got 100 watt USB-C power delivery ports, and uh, we've got three amp USB type A ports. And then we hit uh, the very unique uh, aspects about this, because you got these little modules that uh, can pop out. So all four of these have that option. So that's very unique. So you can use them while they're on here. So let's go ahead and power up this light. Go ahead and uh, power this uh, light up as well. We've got a little Bluetooth speaker. Power on. Bluetooth mode. And we'll test that uh, here in a second. Um, so that's all well and cool. However, the, uh, the benefit is that, you know, this pops out and this little module here has its own battery. And uh, so you can take it uh, with you and use it kind of as a, a flashlight or whatever. And, uh, and then you're able to come and uh, dock it uh, back in here, turn the accessories output on, and it will recharge these. So anyway, that's very, very unique. Something you really don't see with any other power station. And that's why I wanted to get my hands on this and test it because of this unique aspect. Now, each of these do have a USB-C port on them as well. And then this little guy is, uh, is very unique. So it just has these little uh, contacts here. And uh, what that allows you to do is if you look here, those contacts match the shape of these, right? So you're, you've actually got the ability to connect those up, connect with a magnetic connection. But if you needed to expand or uh, increase the runtime on these uh, accessories, see this little red light is uh, lighting up because uh, it's charging. This is a little power bank for the accessories. So maybe you're jamming out to the tunes and you don't want to take the big power station, but do you want to increase the runtime of the Bluetooth speaker? You can just uh, stick it on this power bank and away you go. That's very unique. Let's see if we can get this uh, Bluetooth speaker working. All right, with that uh, blue light blinking, come in here to the Bluetooth devices and there it is on the bottom. Bluetooth connected. It's kind of a quiet part of a song. It does not have any bass whatsoever. Let's get to a loud part, see how that sounds. So definitely is a little uh, distorted at uh, higher volumes with louder parts of music. We'll turn it down a little bit. So it's a Bluetooth speaker. Tiny, portable, it has higher volume than say a phone speaker. A better quality? Meh. But you know, if, uh, if you're out in the wilderness or whatnot, you need some tunes around the fire, you know, this, uh, this could certainly work but I wouldn't necessarily buy it because of the speaker. Depending on how you look at this, this is a cool feature. Uh, it kind of weirds me out because now I've got a power station that is listening to my every word and I'm not entirely sure I like that. But let me show you the voice control here. Hi Sati, turn on all, all outputs. Turn off DC. Turn on AC power. 
Turn off DC power. DC output is off. Turn off accessories. Accessories output is off. Maximum volume. Medium volume. Could be handy if you wanted to uh, not need to, you know, climb across the area to, you know, turn things off and on. Uh, you could just uh, call out to it and control it with your voice. I'll leave it to you guys to decide if that's a cool feature for you or not. In any case, let me know in the comments. Uh, this I gotta hear what uh, what you guys think about this. <laughs> the nice thing is it does kind of go into a sleep mode. You can see that guy's little circle face there in the screen has his eyes closed. And if you say, hello, Sati, that's when he wakes up. You can say, bye-bye, Sati, and he goes to sleep. But nonetheless, the microphone has to be on all the time listening for the command to wake up. So it is always listening. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of that. Is it cool? Do you feel like your privacy is being invaded? Let me know. Let's take a look at this app. Unfortunately, it does look like you must register for an account. Okay, let's go ahead and add a device. I assume this is uh, the device right up here. And we'll go ahead and say add. I'll just go with the default name here. Okay, let's tap, tap it and see what we can do. So it looks like it gives us a state of charge. Let's see if we can activate the inverter. There we go. So you can control which output and input is off and on, basically. This button here called voice control scene. Uh, I have no idea what this is. This is all just blank here. Smart, no lamps found, no lamp is found, so we can't use that. Let's go to settings here. Uh, not very many settings. So we do have these three dots up here. Let's see what that does. Uh, we can rename the device. Uh, it looks like we can update uh, firmware from this page here. Oh good, and there are some further settings here. So you can uh, determine its automatic shutdown period. You can uh, change its frequency. Let's change it to 60 Hertz. Uh, you can adjust the volume for how it talks to you. I'm going to keep it at 10. Uh, you can turn off the voice that talks to you, feedback tones, different things you can t toggle off and on. System safety, general protection, key protection. I have no idea what those are. And it reminds you to do maintenance, maybe just recharge it or something after a period of time. So a few settings to tweak there, but for the most part, it's just a big remote control, Bluetooth remote control to remotely turn outputs and stuff off and on. So the mystery is this little thing here on the top, and the only thing I can find about it is here in the manual, it says it's labeled as number one lamp connection socket. However, if you go to their website and stuff, they do not have an accessory available for that, but it looks like in the future, there's going to be a little lamp uh, that you could attach to that. That's what that's for, apparently. Now I'm curious to uh, see about these little uh, USB ports. Uh, I'm assuming that's for charging these modules only, if uh, you don't have the power station handy to charge them up. But maybe, especially like this one that's the power bank, maybe it does output as well. I don't know, let's find out. All right, first one we're going to try is uh, the light. We've got the cord plugged in there. We've got this little power bank that is only one directional charging into it, and this light should flash green, and it is not. I think this is only one direction to charge this up. Let's go ahead and see. Let's plug this into the USB-C here, and there's the red light. So, yes, on the, the light uh, module here, uh, you can only use the USB port for charging, but it will not output any power. Let's try, though, this that's a power bank that's designed to output power. Yep, there we go. So it will charge from the uh, USB-C here. Uh, let's plug it into this power bank. Oh, look at that. So the little power bank module has a bi-directional USB-C port. Very cool. I presume neither of these are bi-directional, but let's try them. Nothing and nothing. That's to be expected. All right, heavy load testing on the AC inverter. It's rated up to 800 watts, and we're going to push it uh, to that and beyond here with this uh, heat gun. Ignore this giant cord. I needed this space to be able to plug this little uh, watt meter in because of the orientation of the plugs. Uh, I needed to get uh, a cord out. Uh, this is the voltage, though, that we're reading, and notice that we're 110 volts without any load at all. Now, that's within spec, but I would much prefer to see 120 volts, personally. Okay, let's go to watts here, and uh, we'll compare here and let's go ahead and uh, start the heat gun up just on a low temperature. Okay, according to the watt meter, we're pulling somewhere between 200, 400, 300. It's, it's vacillating a little bit. This watt meter on the unit is kind of wigging out. I don't know if you can see, but it'll go down to like 74, then 600, then 54. So it's definitely wigging out more than uh, this watt meter is. All right, let's give it uh, more juice. Take this up to, let's go to 700 degrees. That's good. Okay, so we are pushing it uh, close to its max output, just over 800, and it uh, slacks down just a little bit. Let's see what our voltage is looking like. The voltage has definitely sagged a little bit. 107, 106. Let's push it harder. It's still going. So now we are over the 800 watts that this inverter can produce. It's still going. Let's see what our voltage is. Our voltage continues to sag a little bit. 106, 104, right around there. Let's push it harder. 1100 degrees, 104 volts, 900, 800, 900, 800, 900. Let's push it harder. Over 1000 watts. There we go. Shut off. So this inverter can definitely handle the 800 watts pretty easily, and it, uh, it went above and beyond that uh, quite a bit before it uh, overloaded. So it, it's a pretty steady inverter. The only thing I didn't like too much was its voltage. It was uh, quite low uh, voltage, so just bear that in mind. Being brutally honest, this uh, unit here would be a good unit to get if you're wanting to have a wow factor, right? And uh, be like, oh, do you guys want, you know, 
uh, a lamp to take with you to the, the bathroom, or, you know, should we listen to some tunes, recharge your phone, you know, just kind of a wow factor. Uh, I think, you know, this, this could be fun. If you're just looking for a functional power station, to me, this seems a little finicky. And it seems like they tried too hard to get, you know, bells and whistles and unique things on it. And I'd personally like just a basic power station. And I gotta give them credit for trying to break into a very competitive space, right? And maybe I'm just up in the dark and uh, not seeing the, the benefit here. So help me out. Uh, tell me what you guys think uh, down in the comments. It just kind of seems like a jack of all trades, master of none. It's got an okay size inverter. Not amazing, but not small, you know. So it can run a few things. But, you know, if you're really pushing it hard, it's gonna drain the battery super fast. You know, it's got your standard, you know, DC outputs, USB outputs with the unique modular capability, which is, again, very unique to this, as well as the voice control and stuff like that. Uh, but when it comes time to recharge this, it recharges insanely slow. I don't know. I'm just probably more, if I'm going to be devoting weight and space to something to take with me, I think I want something that just gets the job done and it doesn't necessarily flaunt a whole bunch of funky, crazy stuff. Maybe I'm too basic, too old fashioned. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. You guys can tell these videos take a lot of time and effort to make. So if uh, that's a uh, value to you, uh, please consider liking and subscribing, commenting and sharing for 100% free things for you to do, but benefit the channel tremendously. I would sure appreciate it. I try to read and respond to as many of your comments as possible, and I love hearing from you. So I look forward to interacting with you there and I uh, hope you guys uh, stay healthy and safe and we'll catch you all next time.